Hi, everyone, and welcome to the first webinar in our calibration and profiling series. Today's topic is choosing the right device. Presenting today is Jay Calbley, a product manager at x ray Pantone for the i1 family. I'm Robert Grotans, the global technical marketing manager, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. A few quick things to go over before we get started. Due to the number of people that are attending today's webinar, we will keep everyone muted. If you have any questions, please use the questions function on the GoToWebinar panel. We will have time to answer some questions at the end. Finally, this webinar will be recorded and you'll receive a link so that you can review the webinar at your convenience. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jay to get things started. Hello, everyone. My name is Jay Kelbley. I'm the product manager at x -Rite for all the i1 products. This is one of our, our short and sweet series seminars, so it will go about 10 minutes and then leave some time afterwards for questions. Um, there's, a, there's quite a bit of hardware x -Rite makes uh, for calibration or linearization of printers, as well as for, for creating color profiles. Um, many of you are familiar with our i1 product um, I1 ISIS, I1 Pro 2s, I1 Pro 3s, and our automated I.O. SCARA arm uh, for the I1 devices. Uh, the I1 Pro devices have been out for uh, actually 20 years now, uh, starting with the original I1s to the I1 Pro 2s, and now uh, we've recently launched the I1 Pro 3s as replacements for the I1 Pro 2 devices. These are the most widely used uh, uh, spectrophotometers uh, in, in history. There's more I1s out there than, than any other uh, device for, for, measure, for spectrophotometer device. With the new I1 Pro 3s, we, uh, the, uh, the standard I1 Pro 3 replaces the I1 Pro 2. Um, it has a four and a half millimeter aperture. So some people would call it a small aperture, kind of a middle of the road aperture for reading uh, print, printed material. We came out with a new large aperture device, which we haven't had before in the i1 line. This is the i1 Pro 3 Plus with an eight millimeter aperture. This one also supports M3 or, or polarization measurements. And we've also released a, an i1 IO3 automation uh, device that works with either the i1 Pro 3 or i1 Pro 3 Plus. Um, lots of new stuff with the i1 Pro 3s. Uh, LED illumination. So there's a full spectrum LED cocktail in there versus the tungsten bulb that we used in the i1 Pro 2. Uh, this allows for single scanning in all modes. So you can capture M1, M2, and M0 measurements all in one scan without having to do a scan for visible and, and UV. We doubled the sampling rate of the devices. So you get twice as many samples per second. We've enabled the devices to measure high uh, high brightness displays as well. So if you're not aware of it, you can use your i1 Pro device to actually calibrate a monitor or display. And we can support up to 5,000 nits, uh, which is crazy bright. We added a Kensington lock port, so a standard laptop lock port. A lot of customers don't like the device moving around the shop, so now you can lock it down uh, to a, a specific rip or, or location in your device, in, in your, in your uh, uh, in your workflow, sorry. Um, we made them easy cleaning. This was a pain point with the original i1s and i1 Pro 2s. We'll talk about that some more. Uh, differences between the standard aperture and the large aperture. The plus or large aperture again has a has a has a large aperture to to measure more accurately uh, new industrial materials, so rough surface materials, things with weaves in them like textiles. Uh, we added polarization for this device as well for the plus again, uh, to help measuring in different materials and get more accurate measurements. Um, we support emission scanning, so for backlit materials and transmissive materials. Because it has a larger aperture, it requires larger uh, uh, patches to read, so we, we've incorporated a longer ruler and a new magnetic backer board to, to support larger, larger samples. With the plus as well, with that large aperture, it's really targeted at at new materials, new digital print materials, so ceramics, textiles, thin films, corrugated, uh, vinyls, um, lower resolution prints from grand format, things like that. Uh, here's a summary of, of what's, what's truly different between them uh, in terms of 
apertures, uh, patch sizes. The i1 Pro 3 can actually measure smaller patches than the i1 Pro 2, um, down to 6x6 in spot mode, which means you can get more patches on your, on your, uh, on your charts, which means fewer charts to scan as well. Um, again, the, the LED light source is a big deal. Uh, it makes it more reliable and more accurate than our, than our i1 Pro 2. Um, easy clean filter, polarization, and transmission on the Plus as well. I'll, I won't talk through this, but I'll put it up. Um, this, this talks about the patch geometry or the patch sizes for the different models. Uh, for the i1 Pro 3 Plus, with the 8 millimeter aperture, you do need much, much larger patches, so fewer patches per sample or per page. And also, if you use polarization, you'll need to use slightly larger patches as well for most applications. I'll go into the benefits a little bit deeper. Um, uh, the full spectrum LED light source uh, uh, really uh, gives much more consistency, accuracy, um, and reliability. Um, Couple big differences with the LEDs. They don't put up, put out as much heat, so the the thermal stability of the device is much better than than the Pro 2 with a with a tungsten bulb. Um, as well, over time, it doesn't suffer from some of the things that that a tungsten bulb would suffer from, in terms of carbon burn down or the filament um, just wearing out. Again, single pass scanning, so you can capture all three modes in one pass. This will cut your scan time in half because you don't have to go one direction and then back. You can uh, you can get one scan in each direction for a different row, <laughs> much faster and much more accurate. Uh, the higher sampling rate in our scan mode uh, gives you double the number of samples if you're if you're scanning at the same rate. So with in our scan mode, we use what we call our virtual aperture technology to measure many times over each patch. Um, and as we do that, uh, we average them for a much more accurate accurate final measurement. By having more samples in there, it takes out more of the variability and gives you a much more accurate measurement. Uh, again, smaller patch sizes means fewer pages and faster scanning, which is great. Um, and again, aperture. With the aperture size, uh, in, improves accuracy with the larger aperture, but again, slows down scan speed um, and is really uh, not necessary for some materials. So for things like uh, normal, let's say, coated papers on a cut sheet printer, um, a smaller aperture is probably going to work much better for you because you can uh, measure much quicker and you're not going to see much of an improvement in accuracy versus a large aperture. With the large aperture, if you're using textiles or ceramics or something with a rough surface, the larger the aperture, the, the more accurate your measurement's going to be because it'll deal with all those uh, averaging all those those differences in, in surface and weave uh, that you'd see. But again, large aperture, bigger patches, more pages. Uh, polarization is something we rolled in to the, the plus, and it's tremendously helpful in uh, a couple specific areas. One, in, in textiles and, and, and uneven surfaces. Um, for the polarization, you pop off the existing filter and put on the polarization filter and measure in what they call M3. Uh, it, it's also really helpful in high gloss materials like uh, photographic papers and F-surface paper where you get uh, reflections in the shadows. Polarization will knock those down and give you a much better uh, measurement, consequently a much better profile with more shadow detail than you could get using a, a standard measurement. Easy clean filter, um, particularly on the plus, this is a benefit where people are measuring materials like uh, raw cotton that tend to have a, throw off a lot of contamination. You just twist off the, the, the filter snout of the, the I1 and pop out the filter and clean it. It's, it's very easy and uh, helpful. Again, uh, high measurement up to 5,000 nits for displays. Uh, as monitors get brighter and brighter, this is, this is something we had a lot of customers asking for. Uh, automation, you can upgrade the I1s to, to, to be automated instead of hand scanning using our IO3 device. A uh, couple new things with the IO3 device. It only works with the I1 Pro 3 and Pro 3 Plus. It ships with two different glider rings that go into the, the, the snout that, that actually comes into contact with the samples. 
so as you get an IO3, it'll support either the plus or the standard aperture with the glider rings included. There's a new spacer we've come out with as well, our Z-axis spacer for the IO, that'll add 23 millimeters of height to it for a total of 33 millimeters of, of throw. Uh, this will allow you to put in a light box or thick corrugated samples or guitars or whatever you'd want to measure with the IO. Um, the, the glue connecting all these devices is our I1 profiler software. The version 3.0 that came out middle of last year was, support, was to support the i1 Pro 3 Plus, and, and we've added the i1 Pro 3 in January to that. There's a new version coming out in August that supports automation for transmission with the I.O. table. So you could do backlit, um, backlit automated transmission profiling with this 3.3 version that's coming out. We sell it in three configurations, or the i1 Pro 3s is in, in three software configurations. The device has licenses in it to enable different applications. If you're just doing monitor profiling, you buy the basic version at a lower cost. If you're doing RGB printers, RGB printer profiling, you, you could purchase the photo. But if you want to do full CMYK or CMYK plus N, then you buy the published version with, with the additional licenses for that. You can always upgrade the basic or the photo to a full publish uh, as well. We have a, a I1 profiler upgrades for that as well. Uh, transmissive profiling workflows, again, the hand scanning is available now and the uh, automated is coming. If you have an, you know, an I1 Pro 2 and you get an I1 Pro 3, let's say you have a published version of an I1 Pro 2, you can transfer your licenses into an i1 pro 3 basic and save yourself a bunch of money you can do the transfer in our i in our i1 profiler software you just plug in your your i1 pro 2 and your i1 pro 3 and it'll handle transferring the licenses for you if you have an original i1 uh, pro and you want to upgrade to an i1 pro 3 then uh, please contact us and we'll walk you through how to do it with with some some help currently there's a trade-in for i1 uh, and I1 Pro 2s to I1 Pro 3s as well for an IO. In North America, there's a $300 trade-in credit from an I1 to an I1 Pro 3, and a $300 trade-in credit for an IO Gen 1 or Gen 2 to an IO 3. And that's all run through xrightradein.com. In summary, because we're oh, two minutes over, uh, if you're if you're using an I1 Pro for, for standard paper, that's probably the device you'd want to use for for both linearization and profiling. If you're using new materials, um, new like textiles or corrugated back or vinyl, um, you're probably going to be better off with an i1 Pro 3 Plus and get much more accurate profiles and a lot more flexibility with that device. And again, you can upgrade both devices to full automation with by adding an IO, i1 IO3. Sorry I'm over a couple of minutes, guys. This was going to be one of our short and sweet ones. Um, are there any questions? Perfect. Thank you, Jay. I see a few questions coming in. If you have any other questions, feel free to submit them now. While I wait for questions to come in, I'm going to pop up another polling question. If anyone is interested in talking to someone directly. So one question I see here is, is there any advantage in using the plus with the larger aperture for monitor calibration, or should you just stick with the standard? It's not much on a standard monitor. Um, uh, they they measure very similarly and consistently. There are some uh, uh, LFDs or large format displays used in retail, as well as that, that have very large pixel pitches. Um, those would give you a better homogenized reading with the plus. But uh, no, my recommendation would be for uh, normal monitors to, to save, save the money and, and just get the standard aperture device. Are you now licensing i1 Pros to i1 Profiler? I don't know if this is referring to Gen 1 Pros or Gen 2. Um, so 
Um, the current versions of I1 Profiler, beginning with I1 Profiler 3.2, no longer support the original I1 Pros from 20 years ago. Um, if you want to, if you want to uh, pull a license from one of those devices to use in an I1 Pro 3, uh, you'd need to contact your your local XRite support team. If that answers the question. Would photo canvas and very textured cotton rag photo papers benefit from the plus? Absolutely. Um, uh, a, a, can, a photo canvas um, has a very rough, inconsistent surface. Um, uh, there's two benefits there. One is is getting better homogeneity in the measurements um, from the larger aperture. The other one is getting um, the value of polarization. Um, so with the, that uneven surface and with the high gloss you can achieve on a photo canvas, um, you'd really want to use a plus. You'll see a vast difference in in the quality of the profiles and the quality of your prints um, by using both the plus and the plus in M3 polarization mode. We will take one more question. So someone currently has an I1 Pro 2 with I1 IO, and they're looking for a Flexo film target reading recommendation. Should they wait for the auto release? Uh, I guess I don't understand. From a, um, you can upgrade now if you're doing Flexo. Uh, uh, there's not going to be an advantage in the 3.3 Island Profiler release for you if it's reflective. If you're doing transmissive work, that's where the advantage would be. Um, version 3.3 of I1 Profiler, which is coming in August, adds the ability to do transmission with the I/O. There's already transmission support for hand scanning in I1 Profiler 3.2. Uh, so you could do it with a hand scan if you're doing transmission. But if you're not doing transmission, I don't think there's any reason to wait. Perfect. Thank you, Jay. That is the last question we have time for today. So we will wrap up here. There's a few questions that we didn't get to. Um, and I'm not sure I completely understand what they're asking, but we can certainly follow up with those. So we'll end here, and again, you'll receive the recording for this webinar tomorrow. So thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Bye.